Welcome everyone to Dead Talk Live. Today we have a special guest with us, Jill Larson from The Taking of Deborah Logan, and more recently, The Manor, which just came out last month. Jill, thank you for being our guest. How are you doing? I'm very well and delighted to be here. Thank you for being our guest. So let's get right to it. Last month, your your latest movie, The Manor, released on Amazon Prime, if I'm correct. Uh it deals with a woman who suffers a stroke, gets put into a home, and malevolent forces seem to happen at the hospital. We're not going to give away any spoilers. So you play the character of Trish in the movie. What can you tell us about your character? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, without giving away any spoilers... Um, Trish is someone who has, um, lived at the manor for a a long time. Uh, she lost her husband and, and ended up here. It's a beautiful, um, uh, location. I share a room with another, uh, woman, um, uh, played by Fran Bennett, and uh, we have a room that I would love to live in. It's so, so beautiful. And um, and then a uh, a new resident arrives, and that's Barbara Hershey, and um, she, we befriend her, and she becomes part of our little cadre of residents at the manor. And uh, we can reveal this because it's in the synopsis. Barbara Hershey uh, suffers a stroke. And that's why she's admitted into the manor. Now, before we get more into the movie, there's a lot of undertone in the manor about the abuses that the elderly face that does not get the attention it deserves nowadays. What are your feelings on that aspect of the movie? Well, I, um, I, I have a, a friend who worked in a place like uh, the manor was, and um, he was there to bring activities. So he was an artist and so forth, and to bring quality of life issues to the residents. He, it, it, after I maybe, I don't know how many months, he had to leave because he said he couldn't he couldn't bear to see what some of the circumstances were, which is not to say that every facility Mm -hmm. is like that. And it's not to say that some of it may be necessary, Um, you know. um, So, uh, you know, I I don't want to dramatize it, but I think it's very real. The, the, The writer and director, Axel Carolyn, is from Brussels and she wrote this movie because she had watched both her grandfather and then her father move into facilities like this and and just take a nosedive to climb so quickly and uh so that's so that's one thing that that sort of triggered her her thinking about about this location and this idea for the movie I think the other fact is that it just um, truly uh, taps into everyone's worst fear. Exactly. You know, to think that slowly but surely you lose your agency, you lose your ability to, well, I have a friend who was just told she can't drive anymore. Um, She has some dementia. Do you then you oh you can't do this so you know we'll take your medications for you and we'll just give them to you when it's time so you're always the, it's like they're shutting down the brain and so forth um it, it's a terrifying thought in and of itself it i mean is. that's you a horror your, movie right lose, there you lose your self identity and any <laughs> control that you have over your life and someone else takes over that control and um, right. I'm glad that um, Axel took, used that undertone and put it into this horror suspense film. What, one of the things that I think make this movie uh, so great is that undertone mixed in with horror. And we see horror suspense uh, 
be the gateway for a lot of social commentary. Having done your fair share of horror, would you agree with that statement? Uh, definitely. Definitely. I did not have an appetite for horror. I'd never seen a horror movie when I was cast in Deborah Logan. Um, and I was trepidatious about the whole undertaking. Mm -hmm. While we were shooting, I thought, you know, Jill, you have to at least see one of these kinds of films. And so one night um, in my hotel room, I, I started to watch uh, Rosemary's Baby. And we got about a quarter of the way in or something. And then there were those creatures in the basement. It was like, that's it. I, I have to stop. <laughs> it was too scary for me. Um, it's a little easier when you're on the creating end of it, you know. But, um, but yeah, I think definitely the, the draw and the hook of horror movies well there are two one is just the kind of thrill of being scared like a roller coaster or something um and and the other is that it really does hook into our our own Fear. psychic yeah. fears yeah Abs and absolutely so so yeah it's uh no. It's often based in something that is very real. Absolutely. Now, in the manner, your co-stars are, like you mentioned, Barbara Hershey, Bruce Davison, great actors. Uh, was this the first time you got to work with both of them? It, it is, yeah. Now, yeah, both of them wonderful. are, like I said, wonderful actors. What was your experience working with Barbara and Bruce? Um. First of all, they're they're just so open and responsive and eager to participate, if you will. Um, Barbara had been working for, I think she'd been shooting for a week before we came on set. So already there's a different dynamic. She already knows everybody and so forth. So, um, but I, I don't even think it took us a whole day to sort of connect and um they're they're both wonderful he his first his the first movie he ever did when he was 19 was with barbara hershey wow. and he had not seen her since is my recollection wow. but um he talked about how how much he learned from her at that time because she was more experienced even you know they were both uh, pretty young and uh, and so between takes and stuff, they, oh gosh, they just had such fabulous stories to recount about Scorsese, about Brando, about this one and that one. And uh, so, so that made it really fun too. And they're both wonderful actors. So absolutely, you have a lot to, uh, to work with when you're when you have the privilege of, of working with either of them. Absolutely. Now, let's go to the, the writer and di director, Axel Carolyn. Uh, you said she used her personal experience to pen this script and bring it to uh, the screen. What was it like working for her as a director? Was she very easy? Did she give you guys, all of you, some leeway? Was she open to your creative input when it came to certain scenes? Um, yes, yes, I think so. But she also had a very clear vision of what she was doing. So, I mean, one sort of amusing example, I guess, is that that scene at the end where Barbara Hershey and her grandson discover us around the fire. And um, I, I, as an actress, I was like, this, this is the climactic scene it's got to be this well i don't know what are we going to say how are we dressed what are we wearing are we are we dancing what if so what's the dance so i i was very focused on this because i felt sort of personally responsible for boom making this this climactic moment and um she said no no i think it'll be no no it'll be fine and i i didn't know what she was talking about but she never really dealt with it much and and then it was like the day before we were uh, going to shoot that scene and 
And she said, no, you know, it's just like your old friends out around a fire. And it's very casual. I thought, casual? How could I be casual? <laughs> so, but uh, when we got out there that night, and in fact, even Fran uh, Bennett, who played my roommate, um, I-, I kept saying to her, how are we going to do this? And she said, they'll tell us when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, and that's indeed what happened. And uh, do you find yourself a lot doing that a lot with your roles, maybe stressing about how the director wants it and you may overthink it a little bit? Um, Well, I I, I suppose you could say that I I am an actress who does a lot of uh, preparation, a lot of exploration and um, about the physicality of a character, about the backstory of a why is she here and what is she thinking in the moment, especially with a character like this that is important, mm-hmm. but supportive. Yes. So it's not a character that has a wide emotional arc. Um, it's a character that is there for a purpose. And so that can end up being kind of one dimensional and not that interesting if you don't bring your own history and richness to it. Yeah. So um, so in this particular case, yeah, it kind of, you know, bit me in the butt. But um, mostly, uh, mostly that that's just how I work. And that's what makes it most fun for me also. And we see it. You bring such enthusiasm and excitement. And it has to. My next question, because you brought up physicality, is Deborah Logan. Now, Act 3 of Deborah Logan has you doing a lot of physical activity, a lot of physical stuff. Well, first question, was that all you or did they use a stunt double? They had a stunt, stunt double, but when it came time to actually do it, it just seemed kind of natural for for me to do it, you know, falling out of the hospital bed and, and and things like that. And I'm a very physical person anyway, just by nature. I'm very sort of physically demonstrative and so forth. So um, I wanted to do it. The only place we got into trouble was at the very end and uh, where they wanted me to do the thing. Well, you didn't see it. It ended up not being in the film, but we were trying to create the special effect. And um, with a low budget, the the ideas, they, they just didn't work out. Mm-hmm. And so we were fortunate to, after after we were done shooting, to get a chance to do some green screen and uh, and so forth work that made that that la- that last climactic moment more more well, scary. Realistic. <laughs> That's scary. scary. It was scary. scary. That's right. Deborah Logan was a, a really scary movie. Now, obviously, when you're acting in it, it's fun. You're letting your creative side run wild. Yeah. Uh, what were your thoughts when you saw the finished product, uh, the, the taking of Deborah Logan? Did it scare you? Uh, well, no, it didn't scare me. I, I, I was just interested in seeing all the different shots that we had done and everything to see how they worked out. And some of it was almost entirely improvised, which... I don't get an opportunity to do that very often. So it was a little bit um, scary Mm -hmm. and, uh, and really fun. And working with Anne Ramsey, who has a long history in improv, um, she's very skilled at it. And so that made it easier and better, I think also. But uh, so what was your question? I'm sorry. (laughs) About basically, you know, the physicality. And I wanted to also ask you, Deborah Logan is a woman who everyone thinks is undergoing dementia. And she she probably is. It's never really clearly defined. But at the same time, she's also 
being spiritually taken over. What kind of preparation did you do as an actress to portray somebody who uh, is suffering the onset of dementia, but at the same time is facing spiritual possession? Well, um, the dementia part, um, my mother had Alzheimer's in her last um, couple of years. So I got to see some of that. Um, I think that dementia is something where you're, you're kind of moving along and think everything's fine and you're doing well. And then your mind is gone and you yeah. don't know where you are. And it's absolutely scary. Terrifying, mm -hmm. really terrifying. So, so there's that element. And then there is, um, no, I'm feeling like, oh, the possession. The, the possession also, I think, well, it's two things. <coughs> One is, I think anyone who, I, I think we all have our own inner demons. We mm -hmm. all have our things that we're afraid of. We all have things that, uh, that sometimes you feel like you're hearing hearing a voice in your mind and it's your own psyche probably but it can send you on quite a trip yeah. and so there's that element and then there's the there's the remarkably freeing aspect i mean i don't know that i'll have another time when i get to leap up on a kitchen counter and start throwing things out of the uh, out of the cupboard and uh have like a temper tantrum yeah. you know and uh and to be that free and then to have the director to see the director back to the go cut <laughs> standing behind the monitor like this with this tur turtleneck up over his mouth going oh 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 <laughs> <laughs> It's just really fun. It know? sounds like you had a lot of fun. Oh, now, yes. we got to talk about you have spent a large majority of your career on uh, doing soap operas. Yes. Uh, I remember you on All My Children. Uh, um, now, how vital, and in between the soap operas, you were doing films as well. Uh, and then you would return. You appeared on many different soap operas. Do soap operas hold a special place in your heart? Absolutely. Tell us about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I, I mean, even today, even though, you know, all my children has uh, been gone for over a decade, I think of what a blessing was dropped into my lap when I entered that world. Again, I didn't really know anything about the soap opera world. I had really been a theater actress for the first 20 years of my career. And so it was like walking into a, a, a different world. And I came to appreciate, first of all, what hard work it is mm -hmm. to produce, you know, 48 minutes of programming every single day of the year um the machinery that it takes to write the scripts to do all the stuff and then um the impact that it has on your audience is is huge i i didn't understand that initially and to meet people who women who would say I i've watched since i was a child and now i watch with my grandmother and my mother. And, and sometimes when my daughter's around, she watches too. And we have this whole, it's almost like a special language because they're all sharing these stories and these feelings together. And I see it kind of like when, you know, men who are big sports fans mm -hmm. and they have their own language. Oh, what did the Jets do today or or whatever? And and I think the soap operas provided that on a on an emotional level 
primarily for women, but many men, many men I was were. One of them. I grew up yeah. watching soap operas. Yeah. Now, exactly. when you would go, because like I said, you did films in between your soap opera stints. Was it a shock going from a soap opera set onto a film set that's at a compl- that's done at a completely different pace? Yes. Yeah. It, it's it's taken me a long time, and I still don't feel like I've completely um, tackled it. But um, the the thing about a, a soap opera is that by and large, you know all the actors, you know the characters they play, you know the relationships that those characters have, you know all the sets, you know all the locations. So you walk on and maybe you haven't had more than read through it once as a rehearsal, but you you have all the information of all of your associates mm-hmm. and the relationships, Michael Knight, my son, this one, my daughter-in-law, my, my husband. And so you, you kind of, it's another kind of improv in a way. Mm-hmm. So, but on a film, you don't have that. And unless you are a lead um, or a, a, a predominant character, you often come on in the middle you don't know anybody. You don't know, you know, there's there's no larger uh, arc of rehearsal or anything. You come on and they kind of say, okay, stand here and then move there. Okay, action. And so it's, uh, I, I, I can't articulate it more clearly than that, but you have to be, performance ready well you in both in both formats you do but um am i talking too long I'm no aware. no I'm, this okay. is fascinating um you have to be camera ready and performance ready in either um form but you're talking for the first time you're talking intimately mm-hmm. to someone you just met 20 minutes ago yeah and um, so you don't have the same uh, relationship. You don't have the same foundation. You don't have the sort of connection that you do when you've worked with somebody for even six weeks. But exactly. when you've worked with them for 10 or in my case, 20 years, you have intimate knowledge of that person on many levels. Now, while you were doing let's say all my children, uh, were you at all worried or afraid in your career that you would be doing soap operas for the rest of your career, which didn't work out that way. You've done plenty of films. You've been lucky to do the soap opera world, the film world have done other television as well. You have done all the entire spectrum. Do you consider yourself lucky? Were you worried uh, that you, when you became such a popular soap opera actress, that that's all you would be doing in your career? Uh, when I was offered the role of Opal on All My Children, they offered me a four-year contract. And I said, oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I would never play the same character for four years. And so we whittled it down to two years. Um, but... I laugh at that now because, of course, I ended up playing the same character for 22 years. Exactly. So, so um, like I said, once I became a part of it, I was profoundly grateful. I was I, I was grateful having come from the theater where you're always something of an outsider. You're always working at night and on the weekends. You can't go to dinner parties. You can't take a vacation. You can't do any of those things that normal people, if you will, mm-hmm. do. And so the, the the soap opera offered a more regulated schedule and that was a welcome and that enabled me to become a mother and uh, have a, a regular paycheck that I could count on and and be able to take a vacation for two weeks if I, you know, and so forth. So, so that gave me a kind of foundation in my life that up until then I had had a very nomadic life, uh, which was wonderful also. And I'm thrilled that I had that time. 
but so this is uh that that was very different and so um so at some point you know they call it golden handcuffs and i guess it's true that it's it's uh mostly such a great uh experience that you don't want to really leave and the other thing is that oftentimes um people would leave to go, you know, for greener pastures and they wouldn't be able to break in. Mm -hmm. And it is hard once you are really identified. I mean, even someone like Jennifer Aniston, she's done some wonderful things since then, but, but, you know, it's always hard to get past. She's um, Rachel from friends. She's Rachel from friends. Mm -hmm. And we love her so dearly as Rachel from friends that, it's hard to see her in other things. It is. It is. And so that is a trap. And actors are very much aware of it. And some have the courage to leave. And they manage to go on and, and do well. You know, Michael B. Jordan is one. Absolutely. And so, um, so yes, there are plenty who, who do go on. But for those who do, there are Kevin Bacon. So yeah. started in soap. So... Yes, there are those who do go on and build real careers. There are others who just can't seem to get in the door as, as anything other than those characters they were so famous for. There are no guarantees in the entertainment industry, none oh, whatsoever. No. In, the, no. uh, in the final moments that we have, uh, going back to the manor, uh, it takes place at a rehab home facility where was the actual film shot? It's a gorgeous old mansion um, on the University uh, University of Southern California campus. Nice. And uh, yeah, it was really, really beautiful. Really fun to work in there. So, so that's a perfect setting to portray, uh, you know, that setting. Uh, how long did shooting take? Was it like a three, four week uh, thing or did it take a couple of months? No, I think it was uh, probably about a month's worth. I was there. I worked for like, if I think about two and a half weeks. Okay. Okay. And, uh, yeah. and before we go, uh, Jill, I have to ask you, like I said, you have done the spectrum from soaps, television, movies. What particular project is the nearest and dearest in your heart? Is it All My Children? You know, I, um, I I would be hard pressed to say. I was just thinking today of when I got to do Agnes of God on on stage, you know, mm -hmm. or when I got to play Diana Vreeland in a one woman show, or or um, or doing Deborah Logan, exactly. something that was so far out of my. Um, purview, what I assumed, you know, myself to have, um, that, that was, that was thrilling. And, and so was this, it was the manner in a different way. So how, how does it I, feel? I a character. Hmm? I'm sorry. I was going to ask you, how does it feel when you get approached and people reference you from Deborah Logan? Uh, is that something you're very proud of? You know, it's funny because for so many years I was always identified as Opal. Opal. And then when Deborah Logan came out, um, I suddenly had a whole other audience. And so one audience. day I was on the subway and I hear these Latina girls, high school girls talking, and they're all saying, oh, yeah, she had uh, Alzheimer's or something. And they're talking about me and Deborah Logan, you know, <laughs> and I just had to laugh. It was just so funny but i i think one of the funniest things was my daughter was in college at the time and we were in a um a denny's up at where i was up visiting her at school and this kid came over and he was quaking he was so scared she said are, are, are you are, are you are you her oh my god oh my god and he he like flipped out the, the whole restaurant was looking at us and he said we were just driving here and 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 I said to my friend, I said, drive fast past the forest. I don't want to see Deborah Logan. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so that was kind of wonderful, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can have that kind of effect on an audience. And it was. Deborah Logan was an amazing movie. It was scary. You did a fantastic job. Jill, well, we're out of time. I want to thank you so much for coming on here. These 30 minutes just flew by and sharing some of your wonderful yeah. stories with us. Any final thoughts you want to share before we go? Um, no, I guess just that I feel very lucky and on the eve of Thanksgiving, blessed um, yes. to have had the opportunities that I have and to have worked with the marvelous, oh, marvelous people that I've worked with. You have a wonderful career and yeah. you should be very proud. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to our audience yeah. who's watching this live and who will watch this later on archived. Again, thank All you right. to Jill Larson as our guest. Until next time, guys, stay safe. And on behalf of Jill and myself, Stay walking. Till next time. Bye-bye. All, right. All right. Bye.